Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to talk about the observer pattern in JavaScript and this is part of the series design patterns in JavaScript. If you have not watched the previous videos, we have already covered constructor pattern, singleton pattern and a bunch of other patterns as well. So watch those. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it as it really helps the channel grow and to push the content to all of the developers. With that said, let's get started. Now, first of all, let's have a look at what we are dealing with right now. We are going to use this React application to see how we can use the observable or the observer pattern here. What we have right now is essentially this app.js which has three components, header, body and footer. All these three components have a common parent which is app.js and they are siblings of each other as you can see. So they are on the same level. If you see here, we have a header that has a login button shown. We have some text here in the body and then we have the footer. Now the fun part here is that all of these three components have a switch that when the user is logged in, we show something different and when the user is logged out, we show something different. For example, in the body, you can see that if the user is logged in, we just say this is the best app ever, which you don't see right now because we are not logged in. We are right now seeing this you need to log in message here. Similarly, in the footer, we have the same scenario that we show something different based on logged in or logged out state. And in the header as well, we show the login button when we are not logged in and the logout button when we are logged in. So having said that, let's see how this observer pattern works. So we are going to begin with this analogy that we have three components, header, body and footer. All of them share the same parent. And the scenario we discuss is imagine that header has this button login that that we click and we call this login method. Now the criteria is that when we click that button, it should change the states in both the body and the footer and also the header component itself as well. But the idea is to notify the other component as well. Now the traditional way of doing this would be to use this parent and have sort of a state variable in the parent and just pass that as a prop to all of the other components. Or if you fancy, you can use the context API for this one, but it really depends on what you're talking about. With the observer pattern, we have something different. With the observer pattern, we have something called observable and this observable essentially is great because it doesn't sit in either of the components which require to use it. It is something that is completely outside of it, which means that it is highly decoupled. So it's not tangled around the components and that means that you can switch it with something else if you want to go forward with that. Now, the good part about this is that how it works. So first of all, an observable has a subscribe block or you could call it a function, whatever you want to say, but this is one of the base components of observable. Using this subscribe block or function, multiple components or multiple places in your code will basically subscribe to any changes that this observable may push. So the idea is just like a subscription model. So every component goes to the observable and says, hey, I want to subscribe to notifications for this particular state. For example, here we are talking about the logged in state. So here each component would go and say, hey, I want to subscribe to the logged in state changes. And that's what happened. So at this point, we are just having these components subscribing to that change, or you could call it subscribing to the observable itself. Afterwards, this is what happens when we call the login method. And I see a space here. When we call the login method, we essentially call another block or function within this observable that is called notification. Notify. And this notify is the key interaction element from any other component or place in your code that should change something within this observable and in result this observable will push those changes to the observers. So ideally this is what happens. You click the login button, it calls the notify method to change something within the observable and all of the components which have already subscribed to this observable will get those changes because this subscribe block will essentially push it somehow. I'm not talking about technical details on how in terms of code it works, but in logic, what happens that whenever there is a notify change to the observable, the subscription is automatically updated because every component or every place in your code, which has subscribed to this observable gets that change immediately. Now, when we talk about what is good about this observer pattern is that you can have any code, any hierarchy in your React application or Angular application. It really doesn't matter. You can have the most complex component architecture 
and any place can now observe to this place. And the fun part is that RxJS and Redux are highly inspired by this observable pattern. But then there is a catch that if the observables are very complex, then it really becomes a problem to manage those or to see when there should be a change that should be dispatched and how React would render it because it could lead to a lot of performance issues as well if you don't handle that correctly and that is the same with if you're using them in angular or via a library it really doesn't matter you have to be cautious when using in general any pattern but with observables especially now that we understand the problem let's get into coding so how do we implement this whole observer situation so right now what i have is this project the cwa observer pattern and you should find the link in the description of this video but what we have is all of the components that we just discussed we already Already discussed that all of the component have this logged in state variable which essentially tells what should be shown in the UI we have that in the body in the footer and in the header we have also discussed that this header also has this login button which has a click handler similarly the logout button also has a click handler now I could go ahead and just change this to true and you can see that now we show the logout button similarly if I go to any other component you will see what should be shown based on the login state now first let's talk about this observer so what we are going to do is that we are going to create a class we are going to call it login observable then what we are going to do is that we are going to say constructor so this constructor would essentially create an observers array so we could say something like this dot observers and here we can initiate this with an empty array now we are going to call a function or declare a function called subscribe which is essentially similar to what we just discussed that other components would come here and say hey I want to subscribe to this observable so so let me know in the future when anything changes just let me know so this is sort of enabling that subscription so here we would actually pass a function and here what we just want to do is just to do this this dot observers dot push and we just pass this function and add it similarly if we want to unsubscribe this observable or kind of get away from this observable we would have a function called unsubscribe and here we'll also pass the same function and then we can say this dot observers equals this dot observers dot filter and remove particular function that has been here so we can say something like f u n or simply f here and then we can just say return f not equals to function so we are keeping all of those function which is not the function that is trying to unsubscribe itself so we just remove that one and keep the rest of them finally we would have a method here called notify and this is the function which will be called from the login button click that will change the value whatever is being used here and then will notify all of the observers so what we want to do here is that we just want to say this dot observers dot for each and here we get for example uh, an observer and then here what we want to do is that we just want to say observer and here we want to pass the value that is being provided via this notify function so here I could say something like notify value so what will happen here is that we'll go through all of this array we'll loop over this and then for each observer which is a function we basically call that function with the value that is being notified so the login button would pass true and the logout button would pass false here and that would now reflect to everyone now that we have this we need to make sure that this is created this is just a class we cannot use a class we need to create an instance out of it so here we would say something like export default and here we can say new login observable and that's pretty much it now every time this file is imported we would essentially get this login observable and we can now use it so I'm gonna go to header.js and you can see that I already have this import here so all I need to do is just use it now how do I use this observable so the idea would be as soon as the application starts all of these components subscribe to this observable so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use the use effect for this and I'm going to say use effect and here I can simply say this and here I can say empty dependency or actually I can say login observable just to be safe here and then I would say something like login observable dot subscribe and here you can see that I can pass a function here so I'm going to take a function here which will be called whenever there is a change or whenever the notify function is called within this class so whenever the notify function is called this function that I'm passing here is called you could also just go here and create a function and say something like cons on login state change you could call it something like this and there you could also say something like is logged in something like this and then you could call this set is logged in is logged in something like this now I can pass the on logged in state change here 
and this would exactly be the same thing. So now we are doing sort of subscription right here. And then when this component is destroyed, you could do something like login observable dot unsubscribe and then on login state change. Now this is really important that with observables, we unsubscribe them cautiously and when we should, otherwise this could lead to a lot of memory leaks. So I'm going to use this use effect. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually copy this and use this into multiple places. And also before doing that, I'm also going to say something like this here. So I can say uh, login state changed in and here I can now say header and here I could say something like is logged in. So whatever value we have received now and I can now copy this. So I'm going to copy all of this from here and then I'm going to go to body and here I'm going to use this the same thing here but just change instead of header we are going to say body and then also in the footer so I'm going to go here and then paste here and here I can say footer copy pasta classic SN and here I'm going to go and import or copy the import statement and import it on all of the files so we get rid of all of the errors and now it should be good. Now that we have this, let's talk about how do we reflect those changes. So I'm going to open up this console because we are doing a console log here. And so far we have subscribed to the observable, which means that every component now starts listening to the change if there is a change to this observable. But the fun part is that we have not changed anything because we have never called this notify method yet. But right now we should have at least three observables already listening to this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just console log here and then I'm going to say function and or actually you can see here we got three functions here but rather than function I could log this dot observers. So here now you see that we got three logs. So first we got one from the header, one from the footer and one from the body. So right now we have three observers listening to the changes from this login observable. Now that we have this let's go to the header and then we are going to notify these observables. So I'm going to go here and in the click method here I'm going to say something like login observable dot notify and here I will say true because we are clicking login button. Now that you see if I save this and if I clear this out now if I click the login button you see nothing really happens because I've applied this to the logout button so I'm going to change this to false and here I'm going to quickly go ahead and then paste it here in the login button one and now we have this. Now notice that we are getting a lot of these uh, variables here that is not because there is a memory leak that is because right now tag blitz re-renders this but the state is still there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to refresh this and now we will only see this like one time. And if I click the login button, you see that we got these changes only one time because the subscription happened once. So you see the change, login state change in the header falls, login state change in the body falls and in the footer falls. You see that when we click login button, it notified it to be false, whether it should be true. So I'm going to change this to true. I'm going to save this and I'm going to refresh this to see what is the output. Now, if I change this to true, let's see what happens. If I click login, you see all of these changes. The body says this is the best app ever. I would doubt it, but okay. <laughs> then we got the footer that says enjoy. And then we got the logout button. If I go and click the logout button now, you see that everything changed back to you need to log in. And here you see the changes as well. Now I could keep clicking this and you see that all of these three elements are essentially observing the changes there. Now, if I try to summarize the magic that's happening is that whenever we got a change, whether it's in header, footer or body, what happens is that when we click the login button or logout button, it essentially calls this state change method because we are subscribing to this. So because we are subscribing via this function, login observable class already has that in the observers. And then it calls that function with the login value or with whatever we are notifying. And then when we get it, we change the state using the use state function, which is the set is login. And when we change something using the use state, we know that react renders it. If we don't use this, it really doesn't matter if we change the value, it wouldn't reflect like for example, if I click here, you can see that the login button is still remains the same. It doesn't change to log out because we are not reflecting this. But if I do it now, you see everything changes. So I hope you understood the pattern of this observable scenario. And I think now you can use it even without libraries. Even. Awesome. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, press the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Share this video with others because I tend to believe that these videos are providing a unique value to you. If that's true, let me know in the comments as well and let me know which design pattern I should be creating a video on next. As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next one.